I know a lot of people have the cool, clear eyes of a seeker of wisdom. You can tell them. You can tell about, they drink a lot of coffee like this, but maybe even more. But they, something's missing. They have a lot of wisdom, but they don't have uh, something else. What is it? The wisdom and truth. They don't have the truth. Now, I found what the truth really was when I found Jesus. And when I started reading in the Bible what God was all about, to me, that was truth. So you, when you add the truth to the wisdom, well, you got it all. And maybe you've seen it, or maybe even if you don't consider yourself a Christian, you've seen it too. Some people who, who really have God living in them, when the Holy Spirit comes and lives in them, you can see their eyes. You can see it in their eyes. They, they have the cool, clear. Their eyes are cool and clear. And they have the eyes of, of a secret of wisdom and truth. And then, the upturned chin and the grin of impetuous youth. I believe. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in God. And I believe in everyone that God lives in. Yes, it's time to get real. Hi, this is Angel Neil <laughs> Pastor Jay has asked me to invite you all to join us to get real here at the Ecclesia Cafe Piano Bar. And uh, here is Pastor Jay. Welcome once again to our, uh, our Bible study and I hope that um, you're comfortable and that you have coffee. I can't mention coffee unless I mention Angel, our bartender. He's our bartender, Angel. Oh, thank the Bible you. Says thank that you, very you may much. have an angel. Be careful who you're entertaining. It may be an angel. Oh. Ours is, an, <laughs> That's is a, a real bartender. Compliment, Pastor. I hey. keep making fun of <laughs> You can make fun like that anytime. Thank Pastor you. Jay. All right. Well, let's get into our teaching for today. <clears throat> it's called POP, P O P, the power of perseverance. The message today is actually talking about being a finisher, a finisher, persevering until the goal is reached. Some are starters, others are finishers. Few are both starters and finishers, but Jesus Christ was both. In our scripture for today, recorded in Luke, the closing verse of this parable by Jesus is, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Will he find faith? Will you be able to finish? I know you say, well, I've got faith. I'm a believer. We've got, I've got faith in me. But what this is saying, will you be able to persevere to the end? Will you be a finisher? So that when Jesus comes, there will be faith on earth. We're just talking to everybody out here. So it's say, will there be many finishers? Let's begin reading again in our chronological study of the first four Gospels and see what leads up to Jesus teaching this parable. We're going to turn to today's new international version, Luke 18, 1. And Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, in a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared about men. Three, and there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care about men, five, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually wear me out with her coming all, all the time. Help me. Six, and the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. Seven, and will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones? 
who cry out to him day and night. Will he keep putting them off? 8. I tell you, he will see that they get justice quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? We may all get justice, but will there be faith on earth when the Son of Man comes? The widow in this parable we just read is an example of the drive that God expects to see behind each of us in our work, in our belief and faith. We don't see milk toast disciples in the Bible. God uses tough, callous, persistent soldiers in his army. We are in the king's army, not a bunch of wimps who change their mind, direction, and desires with each fashion show or wind that blows through. If such methods could be used with, such, with results as we saw the widow in our scripture use, how much more can we, the children of God, get results in prayer by the same methods? By prayer. As we have learned, it's not that he doesn't know what we are going through in this life. It's not that we don't know, that he doesn't know it. He reads our hearts. He made us. He prepared our work before we were even born for us to do. It is by persevering in prayer, we are showing qualities that God requires of us in order to endure to the end. And he wants to see us be consistently diligent in our faith when he comes to get us. The last time we were together, we mentioned the second advent or the second coming of Christ. And it is mentioned again at the end of this parable. Will faith be found among men at, the, at his second advent? Those of us who are ready when Christ comes are saints and will have had to demonstrate much faith. Let's go to today's New International Version, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. It says, for the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. 17. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. But after that day, for those who were not ready, even more faith will be required here on earth to endure the apostasy and the tribulation for those who are left. Today's New International Version, Revelation this time, the last book of the Bible, Revelation 24, it says, I saw thrones on which were seated those who had been given authority to judge. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony about Jesus and because of the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or the hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So they're going to be coming back and coming and reigning with Christ, with all of us, for a thousand years. In 2 Peter 3.9 it says, The Lord is not slow to keep his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you. He's patient. He's, he's going to give us a chance, even those who, who aren't raptured and have to go through this tribulation period that he didn't make for, him, for them. Patient. Even if they'll hang on through that time, he says, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Repentance. It means turn around. Admit in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he died on the cross to take away a sin from this world that anybody who would believe will have eternal life. Perseverance and continual prayer is one way of being faithfully ready when he comes to get us. Now to continue our chronological study of the Gospels, we have one more from Luke before Matthew begins again and then John. We've been in Luke a long time. 
It says, Luke records Jesus now when he noticed some who seemed to be very confident of their righteousness. They were very confident. They, they thought they were right on top. And that they had enough faith to be ready when Jesus returned for them. They were very confident of these things. Let's go, let's go to today's new international version, Luke 18.9. It says, To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. 10. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. 11. The, the Pharisee stood by himself and prayed. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I'm not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. 12. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. 13. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. 14. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled. And those who humble themselves will be exalted. So there's a difference there. Do you understand that? Don't go patting yourself on the back. Don't be like the Pharisees standing in robes and, and saying, Oh, I'm glad I'm not like one of those street people out there. Somebody begging for bread or something. Oh, man, that's happening today. That we would think so much of ourselves because we had gained so much. I was just thinking today, we teach our children to go to college so that you can get a good job, so that you can make lots of money, so you can have a mansion, so you can have all the things that, that, uh, that you can get in this life here in the United States. This is the American way. This is the American dream that people come here to get. Get rich. If more and more people could get rich and, and get into stocks and bonds and all those things so that they could just get, everybody's a billionaire. Well, everybody couldn't be a billionaire. <laughs> Have you ever thought of that? Where does that money come from? It comes from those who have, haven't been so fortunate in, in their money dealings. It comes from those that you, you walk on on the way up the ladder to being so rich. The money has to come from somewhere to get to you. You're leaving a whole bunch, a multitude of people on the streets, poor. They give up. That's why God wants us to share what we have. Yeah, win the game, win the race, go all the way, win all of these things like Gates and some of these people have done. And then take that money and give it to those who didn't have the gifts to be able to, to go to college and, and to, to accomplish all the things that you have. Don't go standing and say, oh God, thank you that I'm so rich. And look at them and I'm not like one of those. See, God doesn't want us to be like that. He wants us to say, God, thank you that I'm so rich, and now I'm going to give this to those who don't have anything. I'm going to give them the opportunity to have the things that I've enjoyed. Thank you, God, for giving me the, the opportunity to be able to do this. Being a finisher. <laughs> These people weren't finishers, but that doesn't mean they're sinners. What is being righteous in man's eyes and what is being righteous in God's eyes is what we're talking about. When you go to a circus, a circus, there are not many of them anymore, and see the person balancing way up there on the tightrope. He's balancing on this tightrope. Most of the people watching on the, are on the edge of their seats because they know that this is really dangerous. It's a dangerous life consequence that could happen here. They know that one mistake in judgment and that person could fall. The tightrope walker is also aware of this possibility. <laughs> He's also aware. He knows many who fell because they weren't properly prepared 
they weren't finishers and they weren't careful. So he diligently practices constantly to build his faith. So he says, I really believe now that I can do this. God would have us that way. God would help that, that type rope walker at the circus. However, his final confidence isn't in himself. It's the net. <laughs> it's the net down there that is stretched out below to catch him before he would hit the ground. There is where his final, con final confidence is. And with this confidence, he is able to move ahead without fear, to accomplish the task before him, that if we should happen to fall, the net would save him. Jesus, Jesus is our net. The Lord is there ready to catch us. Whatever happens, when we are believers, when we believe in him, he says, don't worry, I'll catch you. Just keep striving, keep trying not to miss the mark. Missing the mark means you fall. He catches you, sets you up, you start all over again. Matthew writes in his Gospel in 14, 26, 31, God, uh, Matthew 14, 26, 31. When Peter stepped out of the boat on the water, he saw the waves and the wind and was afraid and was beginning to sink. He wasn't a finisher. He was a beginner, but not a finisher. He was beginning to sink, and he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him said to Peter the same thing he is saying to us today. You of little faith, why did you doubt? Jesus is our net in all of those times when we miss the mark and go into a free fall. Is Jesus your net, Angel? So many times he's been there for me. I know, we have a lot of problems and without Jesus, what would we do? I'd be totally lost. It's not unusual to see some of our brothers and sisters stepping way out there on the water like Peter did, <laughs> preaching and claiming the promises and rebuking. We get out there way ahead of the Holy Spirit and then falling flat on our faces. Zeal or desire without the proper knowledge and maturity in God's word is dangerous to have that zeal and desire, but you don't you haven't prepared yourself, that's very dangerous. Proverbs 19.2 says, Desire without knowledge is not good. How much more will hasty feet miss the way? You say, hey, let's go, and you miss the way. <laughs> the question is, where did they fall after their hasty feet caused them to miss the way? When we fall in the arms of Jesus, we demonstrate true maturity in the Lord. And when we know he's there, then we know his word and we believe and we have that faith that we need to have. When we don't doubt our salvation, but fear the Lord as our true father who raises us as his children, feeds us, clothes us, teaches us and protects us, then we can lay back in his arms, realizing the meaning of his peace that the world cannot understand. New International Version, John 14, 27, it says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Another one, to, to New International Version, John 16, it says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome this world. <laughs> He's the net. He's overcome this world for us. He went through a lot on that cross to do that. Philippians 4, 7 says, And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind. Even when we fall in our hearts and our minds, Jesus is there to catch us. 
New International Version, Romans 8, 38. It says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, 39, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. How do we fall in our hearts and minds? Mark tells us in 721 through 23, for from within, out of our hearts, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All of these evils come from inside and defile you. So we can easily fall in our hearts and minds. Until we realize what we are doing, we try and justify this in our own thinking as man's righteousness. We can attend church regularly, sing in a choir, or work in the nursery, pay our tithes, and do good works every day and still be out of God's will because we follow the ways of the world today in and out of the church. Whether you're in the church or out of the church, our hearts can give us the problems that we see in Mark 7, 21, 23. Remember, Jesus is watching our hearts. He's watching our hearts and says that it is the inside of the cup that needs to be clean. Not only the outside, <laughs> It's the inside which is more important. Let's close with a beautiful description of God's righteousness. We've been talking about man's righteousness here, but let's see what God's righteousness. David writes that peace and righteousness kiss one another. Today's New International Version, Psalm 85.10. It says, Love and faithfulness meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. 11. Faithfulness springs forth from the earth, and righteousness looks down from heaven. 12. The Lord will indeed give what is good, and will yield his heart. 13. Righteousness goes before him and prepares the way for his steps. We must try to be more like the Lord in our everyday lives. Letting righteousness go before us to prepare our way. When we step out on that water or that tightrope of possible failings in our lives, the power we have in Jesus as we persevere in faith will see us through all Jesus has purpose for us to accomplish in our lifetime. So there's another one. God bless you and thank you for being here. And I believe in you. We'll see you next time. Now I live in all your promises and nothing seems Except to be in your kingdom of love, my Lord.